Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger! So, coming out of the last episode, we were just headed back to Balthazar's place with our Chrono clone to, um, you know, get some stuff done here, and we just went the wrong way. Lo like, majorly there, we went the wrong way. I thought, for some reason. I must have thought that was like an entirely different area. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going through the door. And up and around. Thank goodness it's not like Secret of Mana where they're getting lost around the corners. <laughs> On Death Peak, you will find the power to restore life, and we heard this already. Mm hmm. I got the clone. Cool. Okay, let's see what you got, man. So he's gonna go in the back and he's gonna drop out these three Poyozo doll looking thingies. And each one's gonna do a different thing to help us progress through Death Peak. Actually, the first one's the only one that really does anything, but the other two just talk to you and give you advice. But, uh, you know, nothing Balthazar himself couldn't have done, I guess, but whatever. I just think it would have been cooler if they'd had bigger roles, but, you know, like maybe one of them turns into a bridge or something. Oh, you need a favor? What's up? Well, so I'm supposed to turn him off now? This part's kind of sad, I don't know. It's like... Switch the creature off, yeah. And the little Z's by his head disappear, so he's not sleeping anymore, he's actually dead. Or sleeping beyond the flow of time, whatever. You know, that new waited so long to do what it had to do, you think you could just let him live a normal life for a little while. Poor guy. Well, whatever. I gotta, I say, I say whatever too much, really. Okay, I'm gonna take the thing, we're gonna ride to Death Peak here. <laughs> Yeah, I did that on purpose. So get up here as fast as you can, talk to the Poyozo doll. Walk when the wind dies, and hide behind trees when it blows. Better yet, leave the dialogue box open while it blows. That's what I always do. So get up here behind the tree, and then go to the next one. Well, yeah, I might have been too slow. Yeah, I was too slow. Yeesh. Well, you're supposed to basically stand behind the trees when the wind blows. It's not, not too hard. You just gotta get in such a spot so that when you run up against it, you don't move. But if you're just a little bit to the right or left, you'll slide off the right side or the left side of it. But if you slide off the right side of the tree, you'll be aligned with the... What the heck? Man, I'm getting the timing all wrong there. I didn't have any problem with this last time. Of course, the last time is, what, five years ago? Yeah, if you can't get right behind it, it blows you back off again. It's really a pain in the butt. Yeah, I think we got it this time. Okay. Woo! Stop holding the run button down here. Okay, now let's go to the next tree. There we go. You gotta be, like, right on top of the tree, too, otherwise you won't be protected from it. Okay. Oh, that, that stuff was about to blow me off there, man. I waited too long to leave the tree. Okay, so right quick, I want to actually give Magus the, um, hmm, let's see. Do we have the gold stud here, or did Chrono take it with him when he died? That greedy bastard took it with him when he died. Well, you know what? I got a silver stud here, so we'll just use that. It'll be just as good. Let's give Magus a rainbow helm, and, uh, you know, I could have actually bought a better weapon for him in the shop in 12,000 BC, but I didn't. Oh, well. I'm also going to rearrange my party a little bit here, because I need power, uh, I need power. I need characters with powerful single text, so I'm going to use Isla and Robo for a while. No offense, Luca, you're awesome, but right now, we need Isla, so, let me see. Well, she's got the right. Well, holy crap. Well, I don't know, though, this, uh, I'm going to leave her with that, because it increases magic defense, although, really, you're not getting hit by a lot of magic out here big hand. Oh. Okay, let's see what these guys have got here. These are the nasty little slimy ball things. I always thought they were nasty, but... Ooh. I mean, look at that. Like he's really gonna fit inside of that tiny-ass thing. And when you cast a spell, the snow effect disappears. That's why the screen looks a little different there. A little clearer for a second. Fire 2 will pretty much wipe out anything on here, so... Just spam your fire too, and you're good to go until you get to 
your first mini boss. There's actually three mini bosses here. All of them are the same, and they're pretty self explanatory. I'll let you know about those when we get to them. There's nothing up there. Wow, we just snuck right in between those, didn't we? Uh, let's go this way. Wonder if we can sneak between these two. Oh man, that is some awesome work, man. I don't know whether we're playing Chrono Trigger or Metal Gear here. Okay, let's get the treasure. One wall ring. There's an the area up here, there's nothing up there right now. There will be later though. Save point if you need it. Do we need it? Not really. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use this shelter anyway. If for nothing else, then just to make sure that I have absolutely full HP. Or MP, actually, is what I'm thinking. Usually, sometimes two floating skull things will attack you there. That's your first uh, boss right there. First mini-boss, should I say. Whatever you do, don't attack the shell, just the head. The thing is, when you push attack, the target's gonna start on the shell, so you want to move it over to the head. And Robo, you're gonna be standing by for healing. Because we're gonna need you to. Oh yeah, Magus got a critical hit. I believe these things only have about 3,000 HP, so it's not really a big deal. But if you attack the shell, he's gonna counterattack with something that you do not want to see, so... We'll try out Isla's Rock Throw here. Wait, that's not gonna work, because he's attached to another enemy. Crap. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. These guys like to hit you with status ailments, too, so be careful of that. But... Yeah, like cat attack, we can try that. If he doesn't put her to sleep, yeah. <laughs> Let's wait and see what he does. Chaos. Huh? I don't have a heal thing either, do I? <laughs> Some Magus in there laughing. That's funny. That's just scary the way he laughs. It's like, I don't know. That doesn't by any chance restore status, does it? I didn't think so. Slurp Kiss would have restored it. <laughs> I haven't even shown you Slurp Kiss, have I? Should have switched out Magus for Frog. Oh, I guess we're back in business here. Now let's go ahead and finish him off. He can't have that much more in him. I know he doesn't. There ain't no freaking way, man. Oh yeah, I'm so excited about that capture card. I can't believe that thing actually worked. I mean, it's not that I didn't think it was going to. I just thought I was going to be too stupid to figure it out. That's what I'm always worried about. But, uh, you know, I know that sounds bad. I don't mean to make it sound like that. Jeez, but... You know, normally he gets a lot worse with the needle attacks. Those really painful needle attacks. It's like I was doing a practice run earlier, and he did two of them in a row. Seriously, two of this right here in a row. And he's about to kill Robo. That's not good. Well, surely he's got to be dead here pretty soon, right? Yeah, I was going to say. So, and if you like the way the monsters disappear, which I definitely do, that shell is a delight to watch disappear. Sorry, Magus, you had to miss out on the experience there. Not that you need it. Giga arm. Oh, hey, it just so happens I have Robo in my party, so... Let's get some text going on here. So the kiss is now doing 200 for healing. That's cool. And Robo's got over 900 HP! Yeah. Oh, great, we're up on the top now. Or, well, sort of. Okay, here's those other guys I was talking about. Again, all you need is fire two, and you'll be good to go, so... Since they're undead, naturally, they'll be weak against fire. So that's not a problem. Yeah, I also want to get an electric guitar. Because... You know, I've played on the acoustic for like 12 years, and I've never, never been that good at it. But the times that I was really good, the only times I can ever remember sounding good, was when I played the electric. It's just easier. And so I was thinking I might just go get... There's a music store, like, right next to where I work. So I was thinking, well, you know, maybe I should just drop by there. They were open this morning. I could have gone over there. I was surprised to see them open on a Sunday, but, yeah. It's just, you know, with my dad having cancer and everything, it's like, you know, he's had a lot of procedures to go through in the next few weeks, or in the next month and a half, actually. So, I've been thinking about him a lot, and I know he always wanted 
you know, every time we've talked, he's always shown me something on the guitar that I've, you know, tried to do myself, but we could never really do it as well as he did. Yeah, because I tell you, I mean, I can shred on the electric, I'm not even kidding. Or at least I, well, I shouldn't say that. But, well, I'm almost out of time here. I can tell you one thing, though, if you ever wanted to grind, this is the place to do it. So next time on Chrono Trader, we're going to get down to where that cave entrance is that I just opened up. And I'll probably just meet you there. So, see you then!